But in every atom that has um, that has a p orbital, you're going to have all three of those simultaneously. It's not like yeah. you have you have you have all there's three different p orbitals in three different orientations. That's right. So, but they all exist at the same. It's not like they all exist. You have a p or an s, but you can only have one, and then you're not going to have both. But here you're going to have all three of those p. Yeah, okay, right? I, I think we, is it, is it three ways to look at the atom, or is it three things that it has? That three three things, things that it has. Okay. Three separate pockets. Remember, we can think of these all as pockets, places that you can put the electrons. So when you're saying that each one is perpendicular to the next one, um, how does that, I mean, I'm sure you can't draw it, but how does that work if it's just, you know, the two lobes and it's like a dumbbell? Because it seems like, I don't know. So here's one region of space where the atom can put electrons. We can call that P sub x if it's parallel to the x-axis. Okay. Now here's another region of space where the atom can put its electrons. And this is called P sub y because it's parallel to the y-axis. And I can't draw the third one because it's coming into the board and out of the board. But there is a third region of space going into the board and out of the board that's parallel to the z-axis, parallel to my chalk here. Uh, and that we can call the P sub Z orbital. And those are the three different places that you can uh, put the, so, uh, that you can put the So the electrons. book only usually draws one of the three at a time. They don't usually like superimpose the image. Why, why would it? Depends on the picture. Um, you, you, you can, uh, yeah, but usually, uh, you, there's actually some pictures I think in the book where they draw all three. Or, or maybe not, yeah, usually yeah. They, they draw a separate picture for each one. This is what confuses me. Like, if I understand that the third one would be confusing, but if you have a 2D picture, then you, you should draw it like that. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're, you have one of those plots where it's like every point is a place where an electron was, and then it kind of gives you the shape right. after a while. But we learned that that shape is what um, a D looks like. Yeah, it, a D. Uh, so I can see how that could be confusing. Uh, so yeah, maybe I shouldn't put them in the same picture. So a D. So a p orbital has two lobes. So here's one p orbital with two lobes. And here's a separate p orbital with two lobes. The key thing is, if an electron was in this p orbital, it would never, it wouldn't be up here. But it would only be in these lobes. And if the electron was in this py orbital, it would be up here. D is something separate. D orbitals look kind of like this. They're kind of hard to draw. A d orbital is something that has four lobes, and the electron can be in any, any of any of these four. Well, okay. So I think I'm asking the same question again, but I just. I want to understand, is it is px, let's say you have a px, does that mean you also have a py? Or is or if I've already established that it's px, that means it, it's just that one. Maybe what, what we should make clear is every atom has all of these orbitals. Um, oh. Now remember that an orbital is just a region in space. Right. An orbital is just a region in space where electrons could possibly be. An orbital is just a region in space where electrons could possibly be. Um, so it, maybe we shouldn't even... Maybe it's not really, uh, it's confusing to say that an, uh, an atom has an orbital. A after all, the, every atom has, has space around it, right. and you could always draw a figure eight around it. So maybe, uh, an orbital is not something really that an, that an a atom has. The question, um, it, we're just saying that uh, if, if you have an atom, it is, uh, so there's certain regions of space where it is legal for the electrons to live. It's legal for the electrons to live in this type of shape. It's legal for the electrons to live in this type of shape. It's legal for the electrons to live in this type of shape. Or it's legal for them to live in this type of shape. The question is not what orbitals it has, but what orbitals it's using. Oh, okay. every, um, so every um, atom could potentially has all these orbitals. The question is, which of the orbitals actually have electrons? And like for us, they're generally going to tell us they'll either to want us to figure out what the potential and value is or they'll give it to us. I don't think we're ever going to need to like, say, get, at least for this midterm, like, which, if, if it's PX, PY, or PZ. I don't think, I feel like what you're asking okay. would be to figure just, that out more. I, I mean, I'm just like, so the relation between the different values you could have for M sub L is the same as the relationship between the values that you could have for L, right? Because it's like, Those, they're just different options. Yeah, they're just different options. Okay. That's right. They're just different options. So again, we shouldn't say, does this atom have an orbital? That doesn't really make sense. Every atom, in a sense, has every orbital in the sense that every atom could potentially put electrons in any particular orbital. What you could say is, does a certain shell have an orbital? For example, um, does, does the second shell have p orbitals? Yes. 
But does the first shell have p orbitals? No. So it doesn't make any sense to talk about whether an atom has a certain orbital. You, um, every atom has every orbital, in a sense. But it does make sense to talk about whether a certain principal quantum number has certain, has certain subshells or certain orbitals. And the, the first shell does not have any p um, orbitals. And um, the second shell does have p orbitals, but doesn't have any d orbitals. And the third shell has d orbitals, but no f orbitals. So we, we just shouldn't talk about whether an atom has orbitals. But it does make sense to talk about whether a shell has orbitals. OK, so we were um, trying to, to look at some concrete examples to get some better intuition for this. So here we have uh, lithium. So we know that lithium now has opened up its second shell. And um, the second shell has S-type orbitals, and it also has P-type orbitals. Um, so how many orbitals are there total in the second shell? What's the total number of individual orbitals in the second shell? Well, one, four. two, three, four. Yeah, there's four total orbitals. Um, how many different types of orbitals? Well, there's S-type orbitals, one S-type orbital, and three P-type orbitals. Um, and each of those orbitals can carry two electrons each. Um, one of a positive one-half spin and one of a negative one-half spin. So for example, if we're talking about lithium, where, um, it, and lithium is in its ground state, where is it going to put its third electron? It's going to put it in this s orbital. Its third electron? Yeah. Remember that the first two electrons went into its 1s orbital. Oh, and oh. lithium's third electron, then there's no more room in the 1s, so we have to start putting in the second shell. Um, oh, and it fills up the s before the p. And, that, and that's the 2s. Would we go to the 2s? Did, I, did I misspeak? Yeah, I meant to say that the third yeah. electron here would go into the 2s yeah. orbital. How do you know? Why wouldn't it be a p? Orbital? We just memorized that s's fill up before p's. Um, we're just going to memorize that, uh, that uh, um, in ground state, the atom prefers to put electrons first in the s orbital and then in the p orbitals. So it's going to fill up all the. Um, but you could just, every time you add an electron, your quantum number gets bigger and you could just put it in another s orbital. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I should have specified that. Um, when you're comparing orbitals in the same shell, you fill the S's up before the P's. Um, however, you, uh, and then you move on to the next shell before you put them in. Although now that I think about it, maybe I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because maybe you guys have only studied one electron atoms yeah, so yeah, far. Maybe yeah. you haven't really studied multi, okay, so yeah. All right, so, um, so we, uh, we only have to think about uh, a single electron. Okay, so, um, so uh, we, we can stop talking about these multi-electron points. So the point is simply that, um, okay, so yeah, well, we'll just think about one electron. So, what, so we could put the one electron in, in the 1s shell, or we could put a single electron in the second shell. And if we put it in the second shell, there's four different orbitals that we could put it in. We could put it in the 2s, or we could put it in 2px, 2py, or 2pz. Okay. And just to give one more example, let's say we wanted to put the single electron in the third shell. If we want to put the single electron in the third shell, what are the options for where we could put it? Well, what could L be in the third shell? So we have nine options, right? You could have 1s, 2s. Um, but let's actually, what, what are the possible values of L here now? When so N equals zero, three. one, and two. And those are also called S, P, and D, what are the possible values of ML here, just zero, zero. and of ML here, negative one, zero, and one, negative and of ML here, negative two, one, zero. Okay. Yeah. So let's say that you wanted to put an electron in the third shell. Well, you could put it in the 3s orbital, or you could put it in one of the three p or uh, one of the three three p orbitals, p x, p y, or p z. Or you could put it in one of the 3D orbitals. Uh, how many 3D orbitals are there? There are five. Yeah, in fact, there's always five D orbitals. Um, and uh, these have names too, but those are kind of complicated names that you might not need to know. Uh, we can just yeah. call them negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So if you wanted to put a electron in the third shell, um, you have, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different orbitals available to you, and you can put it in oh, any of those orbitals. That's where the n squared comes from. Uh, yeah, I think the that total the, number yeah. of ML equal n squared. So I think yeah, the total number of orbitals that are available to you is uh, n squared. Does that work? So when n equals one, there's one orbital available. Yeah. When n equals two, there's oh, four okay. orbitals. When n equals three, then we did come up. Did we come up with nine? Yeah. Yeah. Four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, you shouldn't really have to memorize that because you should be able to work it out right. by doing these little examples right. here. But you're right, there, there are little mathematical formulas. So yeah, the total number of orbitals available in the nth shell is n squared. All right, so again, it doesn't make any sense to ask whether an atom has 3d orbitals. Every atom has all the orbitals. But what does make sense to ask is, does the third shell have d orbitals? Well, yes. But does the third shell have f orbitals? No. no, we don't get to the f orbitals until we got to the fourth shell. Right. Okay. <clears throat> did, did that answer the, the questions that you had? No. Okay.